Hi, welcome to another Words of Hope pastoral chat. My name is Brian Venton and today our theme is finding a refuge. Our text is from Psalm 91 and continues on from last week where we talked about abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. It says, For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. If you are like me and have been following the global conversation, you have noticed that our world is changing at a rapid pace. The changes are hard to process in our minds. And I've recently had a series of conversations with people and I've noticed that there's a heightened level of uncertainty and anxiety in people's thinking. Many are concerned about their personal survival, the prospect of food shortages and what that means for us, meeting their personal obligations, government overreach, restrictive legislation and even the imminent prospect and removal of our freedom to consent. Some feel utterly powerless to do anything about their state of affairs. Some are depressed and trying to manage their depression. Others have deliberately removed themselves from social media. Others have blocked out information flows and drawn back from the narratives to, in order to protect their mind state. Some despair for their children's future. Some even want to leave the country. All this, of course, is very real and should not be dismissed in any way. But I think our text today can help those of us who are struggling in these areas. If we choose to dwell in the shadow of the mighty, the text says he will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and the deadly pestilence. Now the imagery here of a snare is that of a contraption or contrivance, often consisting of a noose for entangling birds or mammals. It is a trap or something by which one is entangled in, involved in, difficulties or impeded. The fowler is a bird catcher, the person who uses traps and snares to catch the unsuspecting animal. He casts his net and traps in areas where birds congregate, such as trees, caves and watercourses. Many of us feel like we are in this exact same position of being ensnared, manipulated, controlled and coerced by others who don't seem to have our best interests at heart. We feel as if we are being channeled into a trap that we can't get out of. Now, then the writer indicates that we can be protected from the deadly pestilence. What pestilence could we be talking about here? Well, in a sense, we could, of course, think in terms of the bio-pestilences that we've been going through over the last year or so. But I suggest deadly pestilences could refer to other things as well. Now, let me suggest three of them. Erroneous influences is a real threat. There has never been a more important issue than to discern the difference between truth and error in our times. When we live in the shadow of the Almighty, the pestilence of error, I suggest, can be filtered out of our mindset. Now, it could also, of course, refer to our personal attitudes, our malignant, malignant behaviours or our wayward thinking. Now, you might not realize this, but when we choose to live in the shadow of the Almighty, God can preserve us from going astray and falling away from truth. When we live in his presence, clarity of thinking becomes real for us. His perspectives on issues often become our perspectives on issues. It could also refer to the disease of fear and anxiety. Fear is the currency of the despot, as we all know. It's what they use to control us. And when we live in the shadow of the Almighty, fear is dispelled as light would dispel the darkness. Now, I read this interesting quote from Spurgeon recently. He said this, If we succumb to the pestilence like others have done so in the past, it is probably because we have done what others have always done in the past. In other words, the way we think about our circumstances dramatically changes when we choose to live in the shadow of the Almighty. Then in verse 4 it says, We will experience the covering of God's protection. He will cover you with his pinions. 
and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. What is so powerful here is that our hope and protection is guaranteed by God's faithfulness. He can be trusted to look after us as a buckler. Now, a buckler was a small handheld shield that was used to ward off the arrows and the darts that were fired at us by the enemy. In this sense, God is our buckler, our refuge, who covers us with his faithfulness and protects us. When I was thinking about this talk today, I, I was reminded of an old hymn written by Cleland McAfee back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. He was an American theologian, Presbyterian minister and hymn writer, best known for penning the gospel hymn, Near to the Heart of God. Now, he wrote this song after the concurrent deaths of two of his young nieces to that respiratory disease of diphtheria. Let me read it to you. He says, There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before thee near to that heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet near to the heart of God, a place where we, our Saviour, meet near to the heart of God. Then this last verse says this, There is a place of full release near to the heart of God, a place where all is joy and peace near to the heart of God. Now, I think it's sad that most of us don't live in the reality of these words. It seems to be foreign to much of our human experience. I suggest to you, friends, that we don't need to hide or run from what lies before us. We don't need to be depressed, frightened, feel abandoned or live in despair. We can find full release from the uncertain future where we choose to abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Now, to put it another way, we will not be led astray by the machinations of nefarious elitist globalists. Their errors and their evil intent will be exposed. We will not be overcome by their deceptions. Their agenda will be unmasked. The disease of fear and anxiety ought not to have currency in our lives in the way that we live. Why? Because God is faithful. He is our refuge and he is our shield, our buckler. Friends, you and I need to live and learn to live in this reality. Is it easy? No. Is it possible? Yes. I suggest we just have to shift our focus that tiny little bit to rest in him instead of our own resource or recourse. I trust you found this chat helpful today and if you are struggling to track your way through these uncertain times, then feel free to give me a call and we can have a chat. But until next week, may God bless you and thanks again for taking the time to watch this, chat, this little chat today. God bless you. Bye.